Okay, verse 26 of Genesis. Let's get right into this. Isaac and Abimelech. Here we go. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gear. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and bless you for you and your descendants. I give all these lands. I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Verse 4, And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heaven. I will give to you descendants all these lands in, the, in your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 5, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him about his wife, and he, and he said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say she is my wife, because he thought, lest the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to behold. Now it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obviously, she is your wife, so how could you say she is my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I said, lest I die on account of her. Verse 10, And Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the people might soon have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Verse 12, Then Isaac sowed in, the, in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the land, the days of Abraham, his father. And they had filled them with earth. Verse 16, And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gir and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up and after the death of Abraham, he called them by the names which his father had called them. Verse 19. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gir quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, This water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one. Also, he called its name Sitten, and he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Verse 23. Then he went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. There Isaac's servant dug a well 
Then Abimelech came to him from Gear with Ostazuth, one of his friends, and Pichol, the commander of his army. Verse 27. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? Verse 28. But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So he, so we said, Let us now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you so that you will do us no harm, since we have not touched you, since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another, and Isaac sent away, sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. Verse 32, it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him, we have found water. Verse 33, so they called it Shebath. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. Verse 34, when Esau was 40 years old, he took as wives Judith, the daughter of Biri and Hytile, and Basemath, the daughter of Elian of Hittile. Verse 35, and they were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah. And that is the end of verse 26. So in the beginning of verse 26, we see Isaac behaving the same way his dad did, Abraham, when he told his wife to lie and say, I'm his sister. And that was simply to protect himself, to uh, save his own bacon. And now we see Isaac doing the same thing. But we also see God blessing Isaac tremendously. And um, I am not so sure about that, but we see the Philistines are being mentioned here. And Abimelech is in the head of the Philistines, apparently. And we see all this about the wells being dug and, uh, and all that good stuff. And then finally ending with Esau. As I have been told many times that the Old Testament, which is where we're at, is really a picture book of the New Testament and things that are going to come. It's just one great big picture book. And you can kind of see this. A lot of this stuff is going to come in play later on. And for me, unfortunately, I forget some of this stuff. And God knows that we're going to do that. And that's why he intended, that's why he wrote it this way, I'm very sure, so that we would just continue seeking and reading his written word. And it's all going to work out in the end. I absolutely guarantee you that. So I will continue reading the Bible as long as I possibly can. And studying it, I will never stop learning the Bible because each time you read it, something new is going to pop out at you. It may take 30, 40 times, but something new is going to, you're going to say, hey, I just got that finally after I read that 40 times. And that certainly has been true in my life. So in our next video, we will come back and look at chapter 27, Isaac blesses Jacob. And looks like 27 is going to be a pretty long chapter here. Yep, it is going to be a whole page, whole two pages pretty much. But I'm very excited to be in this part of Genesis. Uh, the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is certainly a good one. And uh, the covenant is just being passed on down from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's exciting because we see that today. We see how this all came through so many well, 4,000 years since Abraham 
since this story, basically. And it has all came true. So we will read chapter 7 next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time right here. Thanks for watching and God bless.